Greetings everyone, let us now discuss our recursion formulas. In the previous examples, uh, we defined um, our sequences using functions, right? Functions of n. So let's say we have a n is equal to 2n or a n is equal to, uh, let's say, negative 1 raised to n, 2 raised to n. So these are all functions of n, right? So there are also some sequences that are defined using recursion formulas. Okay, so what are recursion formulas? So let's just write it down. It is a formula that defines each term in terms of one or more preceding terms. Okay, so that's a recursion formula. So what is, what is an example of this? Okay, so let's jump right into an example so we can understand this fully. Okay, so we have here an example. So we have here um, a1 is equal to 5, okay? And then a n is equal to 3 a n minus 1 plus 2. And then n where n is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so this is an example of a recursion formula. Now, as you can see, the a n, let's take a look at the composition of a n. We have here 3 times a n minus 1 plus 2. Now this is the thing that we should be um, very um, vigilant about. So a n minus 1. So and you can also see the restriction here n is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so how can we find, let's say for example, the first three terms of this sequence? Okay, let's try to answer it. So as we are given here, we already have a1, which is equal to 5, right? There you have it. And then if you want to calculate um, a2, so n is greater than or equal to 2, so a2 is equal to 3 times a n minus 1, so a2 minus 1, right? Plus 2. So what is this? So 3 times a1 plus 2. So a1 here is this, right? Our first term. So a1, we can then get 3 times 5 plus 2. And we will get 17. Okay, so that is our a2. How about our a3? 3 times a3 minus 1 plus 2. So you'll get 3 times a2 plus 2 which is 3 times our a2 is 17, right? So, 17 plus 2. So, 17 times 2, that would be 34. So, that would be 36. Okay, so this is how you find the uh, succeeding terms of a sequence using a recursion formula. So, this is one of the recursion formulas. Okay, so let us now cite or let us now take a look at another example. So this is a very famous um, recursion formula. This is known as the Fibonacci sequence. Our Fibonacci sequence is defined by the following formula. Okay, so for the Fibonacci sequence, you can generate the, the terms of this by following this formula. A1 is equal to 1. Okay, then we have a2 is also equal to 1, and then a n is equal to a n minus 2 plus a n minus 1, okay, where n is greater than or equal to 3, okay, so because we already have our 1 and 2 here. Okay, so let's try um, generating diff the different terms of this Fibonacci sequence. So let's say we have already have our a1, which is equal to 1, right? Then a2 is equal to 2. 
Now let's start with our a3. a3 is equal to a3 minus 2 plus a3 minus 1. So what do we have here? a1 plus a2. Okay, so we already have those. Oh, I'm sorry there. I, I made a mistake in copying. a2 should be equal to 1. Okay, so we have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Okay, let's now proceed to our a4. So a4 minus 2 plus a4 minus 1 is equal to a2 plus a3. So what is our a2? We have 1. And what is our a3? We have 2. So we get 3. Okay, let's calculate the fifth one. a5 minus 2 plus a5 minus 1. So a3 plus a4 is equal to a3 is 3. And then our a3 is 2. Sorry. So we have a3 is 2. Then we have our a4 is equal to 3. We get 5. Okay, so it proceeds from there. So you can generate it just like that. So if we go back to our definition, there are a formula that defines each term in terms of one or more preceding terms. If we take a look at our first example, um, we used the previous term, in this case, a1, in um, generating the second term, right? And then for the a3 right here, for our a3, we used a2, right? So it uses the one preceding term. Now in, in the Fibonacci sequence example, it uses two pre previous terms, okay? a1 and a2. If you want to generate a3, and for a4, you use a2 and a3. Okay, the Fibonacci sequence is actually pretty famous because it occurs in many natural phenomena. And you can search that up online. It's actually pretty cool. It occurs in the spirals of sunflowers, the, um, the population change of a, a, of rabbits from a single pair. So it also follows a Fibonacci sequence, even to the number of, number of leaves. So, okay, so you can search that up and it's actually really cool. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next ones.